Hey friends, thanks for checking out my channel. Today's video is gonna be showing you how I do my no soak, no summer millet from start to finish. So I'm gonna take you into my garage and let's get started. Hey everybody, um, I'm doing no soak, no summer millet today. So I already have all of my millet weighed out over here. Um, I love these little like crates. You can find them back behind liquor stores or convenience stores. So I like to use these to hold all of my bags up while I'm filling them. Um, and also you can find these back there too. And these are awesome for putting your plates in. Um, so I love these too. So if you see those laying around, um, pick those up where you can. Um, so you're gonna want to have a gram scale again, a larger one that you can put a bag on. And then when you turn it on, you just wanna make sure it's zeroed out. And then whatever you're using, whether it's a bag or a jar, you want to weigh that first so you know how much it weighs. Um, so it's 19 grams. Um, so then you would put your bag on your scale and start filling it with your grain of choice. I use white millet. Um, so I filled this to, the scale right now says uh, 670. So I did about 650 grams of millet in the bag. So after you get all of your millet in your bags, you're gonna wanna add your water. So on here, I marked where about 325 milliliters is. That's how much water we're gonna add to our 650 grams of millet. So I'm just gonna carefully measure that out. Okay, and then when you go to pour this in to your bag, you really wanna get this down in the bag far. If you just pour it, it might hit the side of the bag and then the bag's gonna fold over and your water is gonna go everywhere. So really get that down in there, dump it in. Now you are ready to roll your bags up and put them in your pressure cooker. So this part takes a little bit of practice before you get good at it. You're just gonna line your seams up the best you can that are on the sides. And then you're gonna move your hands down, kind of fold it over. I like to make this pretty flat to ensure that my grains are gonna get hydrated since I do the no soak, no simmer. And then I just fold that little flap under there. So it's kind of like this little brick. And then I'm just gonna place it in my PC. So you wanna make sure in your PC that you have a trivet or something that's gonna raise up above the water. You don't want your bags or your jars hanging out in the water. They should be above the water. And this part I feel like takes the most time because you want to do it nicely because when it pressure cooks, it's going to kind of like vacuum seal this. And if your seams and your bag aren't lined up nice, then it's like all wonky for when you're putting it in your impulse sealer after. So just going to load these up. And then as you load up your trivet, just make sure to keep your weight even or your trivet is gonna tilt to one side. Um, but once you get a couple bags in there, you're gonna be good. So yeah, doing it like this, they're kind of like little water balloons. So you just need to be careful because if you lay this on its side too much, all of that water you measured out is gonna pour out. And right now I've got a pressure cooker going in the background with some liquid culture in it. So if I have to stop for a second and run over there um, to turn the heat down or something, I apologize. But I think I'm gonna be able to get through loading this up 
before it hits 15 PSI. And then these bags, I don't think I told you what kind of bags I use. These are 3T point uh, 0.2 micron filter bags. Now you're gonna notice, I mean, there's a lot of space in the bag. Um, I tried using a different size bag when I first started doing this. It was like a taller, skinnier bag. But since I do the no soak, no simmer millet, I found with a tall, skinny bag, my millet towards the top just like really wasn't getting hydrated enough at all. So I started using this size of a bag and it's been working out really well for me. I did some no soak, no simmer millet in jars a couple weeks ago. Um, I had never done that before until recently and all of those came out really great. So if you don't do bags and you're doing jars, just know that this method also works very well. Now, when we get these out of the PC later, when they're safe to handle, but still hot, we're gonna do um, a hot shake to distribute some of that hot moisture around um, so that any millet that isn't perfectly hydrated uh, can get a little more moisture in there. Now you'll notice I said isn't perfectly hydrated. I mean, most of the time grains aren't, um, but your mycelium isn't really gonna care that much. It's gonna work through what it likes and what it doesn't, and it's not gonna be that big of a deal. Um, so I've been doing this method for like a year and a half, and it works awesome for me. So that's why I use millet and do no soak, no simmer. It's how I started and I have it tuned in. All right, so this is loaded up and then we are just gonna, you know, put our lid on properly and get this on the PC. Um, if you wanna see how to put the lid on, just give me a second, let me go grab it. So here's the lid. Um, you just wanna make sure that your gasket, this metal ring or whatever, is uh, nicely in place. You also wanna take a peek through this hole here and just make sure that you can see uh, well through it. It's not obstructed. And then you're just gonna take your arrows. There's an arrow on the lid and an arrow on the handle. And you line those up and then you just push down on the lid a little bit as you turn it into place and then it's ready to go. All right, so um, yeah, we move this on to the PC. I put it on high and then let it go. Okay, we're back here. It's been about 25, almost 30 minutes. You can see there's a good amount of steam coming up out of that little uh, spout. I don't know what the technical word for that is. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and put our weight on. So you're just gonna drop your weight on there. And then in a little bit, this little, I'll call it a button, is gonna pop up. Um, but I'm probably not gonna stand out here and wait for that to happen to show you guys. Um, or maybe I will. All right, here we are just a little while later and our weight is rocking nicely. Um, you can see we're just over 15 PSI. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna turn this from high to medium and then we're gonna let this run for two and a half hours all right it's been two and a half hours we're still just right above 15 psi our weight is still got a nice little wobble so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off and then turn this off and then I'm gonna go and plug the extension cord but um, we're just gonna let this cool down um, it's going to take a while for the pressure to drop once this little guy drops back down um, and this is at zero again, it's safe to open. Um, so we'll do that in a while. Okay, we are now um, inside in front of Flo. 
I've got the pressure cooker here. I've got my impulse sealer here. Um, your pressure cooker is going to be safe to open once this little uh, pop top goes back down and is flush here. So we're good to open this up. I'm just going to push down a little bit and then turn it. And I've already removed the weight. I already took that off prior. So we're good there. Okay. So here are our bags that we put in there. Um, see, can you see that? Okay. There are like a couple little burst grains, but that's not that big of a deal. No big deal. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to open this up. We're going to get some air in here so that we can shake the bag. So I'm going to kind of roll it down a little bit so that millet doesn't fly everywhere. And we're going to shake it and we're going to get it out of these little uh, pockets up here in the corner. We're just gonna shake it real good. I even then kind of lay it out flat a little and look for chunks to break up. So you're just trying to get rid of the clumps and redistribute some of the moisture, okay? So once you feel like you've gotten that done pretty good, you don't have to worry about it being perfect right now. We're just gonna press out some of the air seal up the top. Okay, so I'm just going to put, <laughs> not the paper towel, I'm just going to put um, a little bit of the bag in there and then I'm going to put my lever down and it's magnetic so it's just going to um, lock into place and then in just a minute when it's done it's going to pop like that. And then we've got um, a seal now. So now this one's done. Okay, here's another one of the bags. You get kind of a close look there. You can see a few burst grains. It's not going to be a problem though. So we're going to open this up. Put some air in there. Now, if you don't have a flow hood, I recommend you doing grain jars. In the grain jars, you're gonna have some head space that's gonna allow you to shake without opening the jar. Um, but since our bags of millet come out of the pressure cooker so sealed up, we need to kind of break that seal so that we can move things around and get rid of some of these clumps. Okay, we're just gonna seal that up. Start working on another one. Like what I do next after I get all the bags sealed is I usually lay them out flattish. It's still pretty warm. You're going to see some condensation and stuff on your bags. And maybe you can kind of see the condensation. I don't know. Um, but anyway, I kind of lay it out like this so that any of that extra moisture can kind of um, cover more surface area. got like a little pricing gun I use. Let me see if it's handy. All 
right, it's in a drawer on the other side of the room. But I have a pricing gun I use, and I make stickers that say today's um, date, and then I put them on the bottom of my green bags just so I know when I made these in case um, I've prepped a lot and I'm not getting through them in a quick fashion, then I can know um, how long it's been sitting on my shelf for before I go ahead and inoculate it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do these other three bags. I hope you guys found this helpful. I can't think of anything else right off the top of my head um, to tell you. I, you know, I do another shake on this in the morning um, once it's cooled and really try to break up some of those clumps. And yeah, that's it. I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, next time I prep jars, I'll do a video for that too. So thanks for watching. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if you haven't liked this video and subscribed to my channel, please do both. It really helps me and the algorithm get my content out to more people so we can help more people grow. Have a great day and thanks again.